We are going to start our open studio exhibition. These are students from fine art, experimental media. They prepare something for us. Happy to see you here. Okay, I think if everyone's ready, we can start. So I will present myself very quick. I'm Selena. I'm studying my MA fine art uh, masters, masters in fine art on Brock College. And I'm also a social media ambassador. So so I am here. Very happy to be here. We're going to start an exhibition, as I said, it's an open studio exhibition with our students from Fine Art Experimental Media. They prepared something for us. And we also have here with us Kelly and John, if you can maybe wave. <laughs> Kelly is the program leader and John, he's the main teacher. Uh, thank you guys for putting this together for all of us. So if you may please can start with uh, Telling us the, what about the program, what are the students have been doing for the past years, where are we going, what are we expect to see today? Thanks. Thank you, Selena. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm Kelly Hoban. I'm the program leader of our Bachelor's of Fine Art Ex Experimental Media program, which is a three year um, degree. It takes three years to earn this degree. Um, the students who are here presenting today are currently in their third year, um, only, well, actually less than a semester away from graduating. Um, in the first two years of the program, uh, students experience a lot of different um, media. They study in traditional media, like drawing, painting, and sculpture. And our program really emphasizes new media, the use of technology, and this is why um, our program is called Fine Art Experimental Media. So they work with animation, video and sound production, um, three-dimensional animation, 3D game art. Some of our students explore virtual reality and augmented reality in their studio practice. Um, so after two years of really exploring a lot of uh, different approaches and um, studio-based research to really establish a uh, person's own studio practice. In the third year, our students choose their own path, their own direction. They select uh, the media and the approach that um, they really want to pursue as a professional artist. Um, so they spend the year um, you know, really fine tuning and developing this independent studio practice with the support of critique, support of lectures, um, tutorials, individual attention, and they cultivate this practice um, throughout the entire year, which ends with a final exhibition. Um, and John Hill is the module leader for the independent studio practice module in the autumn and the final exhibition module in the spring. So maybe I can hand it over to John. Yeah, thanks. So, um, I mean, I actually, I teach all throughout the, the three years of, of the Prague College um, Fine Art course. Um, working on working with people in theory, working with them on uh, exhibition practice, but it's really in the third year where I'm the I'm the module leader, I'm the, I'm the head of, of the studio program in the third year, um, where I get to really work with with students on their on what they make and on what they want to make. Um, and it's in third year that uh, students get their their own studio space. And uh, Sophie and Kea are currently in the the first floor studio space. Oh, and you can see now. So this is a video we took earlier today of of the the Fine Art Studios uh, on the, the first floor of our, our studio building called Bishop's Court. Um, and that's where uh, students will spend the whole of their final year really working on uh, projects in any media, uh, any of the medias they've worked with throughout their time at Pratt College, whether it's, uh, it's digital or whether it's a more traditional uh, drawing or painting or, or photography. Um, and they, uh, yeah, they have, they have two full semesters First of all, to develop really kind of fine tune what exa exactly it is they're going to do, uh, the, the, the tools they're going to work with, the media they're going to work with, the ideas they're going to work with. Um, and then in the, the final semester, the final half of their third year, which is where we are now, we've just started, um, it's really about taking that work and getting it ready to show, getting it ready for a final exhibition where uh, there'll be a public audience to really come and see a kind of a completed body of work. Um, and it doesn't need to be one thing, it doesn't need to be in one kind of art, it doesn't need to be in one media. And as you'll see, I think the students who are, are going to show you work today, they're, they're all working across like a range of different things, even right up to the end, 
but it's all been brought together through their study, through their research into kind of a single, a single practice, a single thing that they can say each part of this, each part of the work that I'm showing is, uh, is part of the same way of thinking, part of the same, my own personal artistic approach, the, my own, the thing I want to say or the thing I want to do or the thing that I want to put into the world. And, and they get a chance for everyone gets a chance to see that at the, the final exhibition, which this year will be right at the beginning of June. Great, thank you, John. I don't want I don't know if someone from the students want to say something about their space that we're seeing on screen. Any comments around how do you feel Bishop scored this studio is based in central uh, Duncan Prague? Very, very close to many things for the from the main campus too. So if any student wants to just on make and comment about the space, what what guys do you think about the space you are giving? Um, I think I think is it really depends on um, what you want to do like like uh, different different part of the spaces have have a different aura for instance my my studio is a bit near the window and it's and it's really nice but it's not that cozy and it's a bit cold but but mainly I was I was doing maybe some watercolors or some uh, collecting of trash there so it's fine and uh, it's really close to a lot of shops uh, sometimes just grab some oranges I mean. <laughs> yeah I, I think uh, uh, this this school and the studio provides uh, like um, uh, the, they, they provide the, the alternatives for for what you want to express or, or like uh, dive into and experiment with uh, so if it is digital uh, there's uh, there's a good internet and uh, good computers to, to use and uh, or if you want to do paintings there is also like the teachers in painting and sculpture that will help you uh, and uh, I think oh, the teacher has different different uh, uh, attributes that they can provide also different uh, uh, yeah different uh, opinions and uh, a good uh, a broad spectrum of uh, knowledge yeah yeah for sure so I think I think it's great. I'm also, as I said, studying on the fine arts program, and I also have a shared space studio. And I think it's one of the best features out of these programs that us like we have a space where we can just completely be creative and use as we want. And it's just great for for our own research, artistic research, and experimentation. So with that said. I think it's enough for introductions and I think everyone is eager to see some of your work. So let's start with the work of Sophie. You can wave your hand on me and just show us your, your work, what you've been doing. Yeah, so I think I, we had a portion in the video that sort of showcased one of the things that I was doing, which is an installation. Um, and I, this past semester and just in general, I think, I've been very interested in um, memories and sort of how we uh, remember things and how that can become something very specific or something very general and sort of the way how our brains work in that way. Um, so that was sort of one of the bigger topics that I was looking into this semester. Um, so the installation itself has a sound part and uh, a more visual part with photos. Um, and it sort of is both talking about the difference in sort of very vivid memories and memories that are more forgotten or are more like a very specific concept of a memory. Um, so that's sort of what the thing itself was about. I will share part of your video with everyone so we can see it again there. I remember the 
Yılbaşından birkaç gün önce. Can you tell us a little bit about the photos? Like, did you got them from uh, during a period of time? Are they recent? Uh, yeah, so the photos are basically from a very big archive that I had, which are photos that I've been taking of just my life, my friends, sort of very vivid moments that I wanted, in the moment, sort of wanted to remember. Um, and it's like a really big archive at this point, because I think I started it back in like 2012, maybe. Um, and I've always wanted to give some input with those into my artistic practice. So I first always more use them as sort of an archive. And now I really wanted to see more how I could make them part of this installation because the sounds that you're hearing um, are uh, a lot of people, friends from my life that are talking about a very vivid memory that they had. So it's sort of describing something very vivid in their mind. And I think a lot of the photos that I use for this piece are things that are very vivid memories, but maybe they also sort of became vivid memories because I have photos of them. Um, so there's sort of like a two part setup where part of it is the um, sound insulation and then the part of it is like a part of that archive of photos that I had that you can sort of that I'll have some sort of a context on the back so that you could sort of go through them physically. Great. Thanks. So if any questions that anybody has, you can just pop them on the chat of the Zoom or Facebook and I will just Keep going, going back to them. So then we have, let me just stop, sorry, Nicolas. I have Nicolas here. If you want to wave your hand and talk to us a little bit about your work, please. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have this uh, a bit chaotic space that have uh, kind of fluxed. Uh, like first I was, uh, uh, I was sitting next to the window and was working next to Anthony. Uh, but uh, my sort of creative process expanded through the, through the shared space of uh, the studio. It's uh, um, kind of working with um, um, the relationship with like uh, the environment, how, um, how we were influenced with uh, influenced by all the impressions uh, that we take notice of or we don't take notice of it. Um, so in the beginning I was kind of like, I was uh, uh, sort of feeling the, my, my, my colleagues uh, and fellow students who was working and, uh, and I ended up uh, moving my space to this, uh, this is what you see. Uh, and uh, putting, trying to concise all of the stuff into this uh, smaller space uh, or kind of big space, but uh, and uh, and so I'm trying to understand uh, um, our 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 environment, of like yeah, trying to understand how things work. So it, uh, it has led, led to me focusing on uh, uh, textures and uh, uh, also like this because, so I, and yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, so this, uh, so then I work with the material that uh, I have at my disposal and, uh, and it becomes my, my gesture, sort of like an inter intuitive uh, work process and going back and forward and trying to see how the space works within itself or maybe I take it out like in a white box kind of scenario and, uh, or I put it back inside the, my, my ongoing work space that uh, uh, and I'm creating a, the environment and uh, uh, 
trying to think about like what's the difference with making an environment or making an installation and uh, um, yeah so <laughs> it's, it's uh, kind of a lot of things to think about and uh, you see some of my tools that I work with and that is also important to me uh, what about if I can interrupt you what about this pick this work can yes you a little bit about it um, yes so this work I call uh, the risosphere and uh, it's kind of like a, a risosphere is the um, the area around the roots of a, of a tree or a, or a plant uh, and uh, so um, so it's about the being like growth and uh, and, and uh, what it's and, and I'm thinking about that and uh, you can think about the different things uh, like sitting under a tree and meditate, uh, and I guess uh, when you present an artwork, uh, what you what what are you trying to say? Uh, and thinking about this, and I guess I, I would uh, want to uh, inspire people to meditate. Uh, so I have a, a I have a tree on top of my head. <laughs> Thank you. I will jump now to Kea. You can maybe raise your hand so we see you. Okay, I see you now. Hi. <laughs> so let me pop your video, but start telling us uh, a little bit about your work, what you want to show us today. Uh, sure. Uh, so I mainly work with uh, video and most of my time at Rock College so far I've been exploring how I want to use that video and how I want to communicate with people um, through video and I've also been exploring performance art during this time uh, and still uh, a lot of my work is centered around video and how video like relates to performance as well. Um, this past semester, I spent most of my time working on my research thesis and also kind of understanding what my, um, my own practice is about. So I was experimenting with uh, a lot of uh, mainly digital things, uh, one of which is um, I was using a lot of medical imagery in my work. And this is because of a workshop that I attended last year. And I've basically been doing a lot of experiments because, with that, with that kind of material. Um, and a lot of my work also includes my own image, as you can see, like right on my website, literally starts with my face. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of me in my uh, videos. Um, the one you're seeing on the screen right now is actually, I made this for the video CV last semester. Um, and just to talk about this, maybe just to talk about this specific video. Uh, I, because we had to make a video CV and I really wanted to make something that I want to be able to show people outside of applying for a job or submitting for a project in school. I wanted to make something that I personally like and I can say that it's mine and it's, you know, it, it has something to do with my own practice. So I used videos of people that I know that I've worked with and um, I just used videos of them talking about me and their experience of working with me. So this video is mainly about understanding how working with those people has shaped my practice. Um, and that's why this is my video CV. Yeah. She called us up on I was like playing with a little bit of audio. I'm going to frog. I worked with Kea on the project that was called Insider with where we were a team of four women working together. Uh, we were creating a installation performance for one person at a time. Working with Kea is always fun. She is very 
uh, creative. She always, she was a great attribute in the process because she was always thinking differently. The other three of us were working more in performative arts. And so her uh, thinking was always very bit different. And she always brought like ideas that were new to us and a little bit out of what we were thinking. So that was always a great way of working together. She's also very hardworking. She's maybe too hardworking. I don't know. Um, but she never really gives up on anything. She really wants to try anything. The people you interviewed, they knew they were going to be on this on this piece or you like didn't tell them anything and you were just like, hey, what do you think about me in five <laughs> seconds or how, how was the approach? Uh, I actually had like a whole uh, plan for the video CV initially that I wanted to, I had, I had kind of written a basic script on the way. So I had written down messages to each of these people that I want to use, um, I want to just, just send me a short video of you talking about me. And I also give them some context that I wanted to be just some highlights about, you know, um, just talk about when we work together and how you felt. So I didn't, I didn't really tell them exactly what to say, but I did give them some structure of what I want them to talk about. And it just so happens that everyone sent really long videos. I didn't expect that. I thought I would just say, give me like 30 seconds of how much you love me. Uh, but then everyone sent really nice long videos and I thought this is what the whole thing should be about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like, kind of respecting the material you receive from other people and not uh, trying to fix it on a box. It's going to be kind of one of the challenges. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that I think it's Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gaya, for the material. Thank you. I will now give the word to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, can you? I'm, I'm not sure Lisa was able to join the call today. Oh, sorry. sorry, sorry. So, Anthony, I see you there in the class. Hi. So, please start with me, you'll get what to work. I will put it on the share screen in one second. Yes, so, um, so my work start with the comments from my previous uh, teacher, Afonso. He said that um, I, he, he knew that I breathe like a thousand or a million times a second. And so my work is basically about digestion. Um, so, so, so this, this year I, I kind of diagnosed as having Crohn's disease, which I'm still kind of step skeptical of kind of, but, but um, so all of this is my trying of like how to cook because at first I didn't um, trust like restaurant food. And so I, this is also my food log and this is my planning of how like, how um, I can show all these things so there's one layer of my personal digestion uh, to to understand what I should eat at where and what. And, and there's a part where I was asking my mom, my nutritionist, my doctors, or perhaps my spiritual master at, in India, they all speak a total fucking different things. And so and so I'm so confused and, and that's why I knew I need to build my own layer of understanding. And so you see all, the, all of these. And while uh, in the video, somehow you can see a shelf and that is the second layer of digestion, which is kind of like um, uh, a lot of the times I ate baguette boulevard, which now I kind of don't want to buy too much of it. But anyway, I, I had, I accumulated a lot of baguette boulevard wraps and all, all other different kinds of materials, mainly papers and uh, some trash. Let's see, there's so much. Uh, and, and, and so, and so um, I think that um, although these, these are maybe perhaps 30% of the waste that I produce, I think that is, is also a good practice for me to think about how I can digest my experience uh, uh, generally, so 
So uh, the next semester, I might I might try to ask help from him, from him to help me to kind of try to how to build an environment from from these kind of trash and thinking about like like about digestion. Like we 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 are all uh, dealing with more information and we ask other people for advice, but we never really ask about ourselves about how we feel and think about it and I think we we should um, we, 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 we should instead of trying to tackle the problem of how I can digest but how I can guide my own uh, normal digestion so so see so to to shape or, or to like have a second or first eye to see how I normally think and so to 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 change how I normally think. So it's kind of matter, but anyway, all these things is about digestion. Digestion. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's it for me. Um, so was there a kind of some a guideline or parameter for the food you were choosing to try? Like where you were mm -hmm. all types of food or any recommendation or you were limiting yourself to so, so it. It, 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 it depends on different period of time. For, for instance, uh, there were a period of time where I was super weak. And so every day I cook the same thing, which is chicken breast rice. Uh, and, and then later on, I, my, I feel better. Uh, so I start to eat, uh, cook things that are less oily. And, and even in vegan restaurants, Although they are kind of healthy, but they are oftentimes oily as well. So at that period of time, I have this decision. And then I have other period of time that I have different uh, uh, choice uh, decisions because I maybe I asked my nutrition for advice and she said something, oh, you should not eat eggs. And so I try to not eat eggs, but, but I realized that it's, uh, it's kind of fucking impossible for now, at least for my current brain, I just cannot handle how, I just cannot think about like, what is the otherwise. So, so uh, in this na naivety, so in my own, uh, so now I'm acknowledging uh, how naive I am. And so now I'm just trying to cook and eat with my naive, naive, naiveness, while at, at the same time, I know that I have to learn cooking better. But, but um, so there's some kind of balance, and and it's it's about it's not about what to eat. It's about what to eat at what moment and what environment, and uh, yeah, it's kind of like um, just just to be present. I think to find the comforts in yourself a bit like this. I, think. I personally find it pretty rela relatable, like. There's no one being that doesn't have this process of digestion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think everyone maybe can have can have their thoughts around it. Thank yeah, you. and 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 it's also like now now that I'm eating and I'm thinking, oh, I can I can I can still survive. I can it's fine. I can still now I'm better, so I eat restaurant food. But at the same time, you kind of understand that uh, perhaps I still have to learn about it, even though. Now I feel good eating restaurant food. So it, it's, it's like it's like what I eat now and what I eat before I got diagnosis is a bit, it's quite similar, but the understanding is different because I do all this research and how understanding what I feel about different kinds of food. Thanks. I will go now with Nadia. Yes. Okay. So Nadia, hey. Hi. I guess if you can talk to us a little bit about your work while I'll put your video on. Sure. So because of this current situation, I haven't been really working in the studio itself that much. So it ended up just being me having all my things in my apartment. And I didn't know how to really display all the stuff that I made. 
um, as it was um, a mixture of digital things that you can't really see here from this video that much, but there are videos and different things that I was just exploring. I really wanted to focus this time, um, this studio time on just trying to make as much content as possible to then pick and choose and maybe see what I'm really interested in to, to kind of develop further into the final project that we're going to be working on right now in the semester. Um, so I decided to bring the things that I made. And since it was a lot of different things, uh, physical and digital, I created this installation because I didn't have a, a set space in the studio anyway. I thought, why not make it like play with the content. So how do I kind of display it in an interesting way? Therefore, I put it in the toilet, in the bathroom, you know, just a, a really, you know, unconventional, I guess, place, but it worked with the content really well, I think, especially with the video. After seeing that the projection really fits with the um, ceiling, like just how it dimensionally kind of fits in the ceiling. I thought, okay, I'm gonna do that. So you can sit on the toilet, look up, watch the video that's created with different textures. I really was interested in exploring, like creating the body, kind of taking it apart and maybe making something else out of it. It's almost like making, like processing it through like a food processor, I don't know. It's just all texture, very meaty, fleshy looking things, um, kind of maybe landscapey, maybe a little bit overwhelming, especially in this tiny space. Um, so yeah, and uh, yeah, I also did some paintings uh, there. I was really um, with the physical things, the mask that's right at the beginning. Um, this is a failed experiment. This foam was used as a texture in the video. Um, and I was also uh, exploring different parts of the body. So for example, you know, bones or teeth um, that are my own. This is a painting of my uh, fucked tooth, unfortunately. Um, the spray paints were also stenciled um, from the model of my teeth. And uh, this is my video CD playing on the computer. And yeah, the mask at the very, very beginning with the, the, the white one with the teeth on it too. <laughs> Uh, was made, yes, this one. Um, it was modeled, uh, the, the teeth are like a, um, a cast from uh, the alginate that dentists use. So I put uh, dentures in and then made a copy of this like set of teeth and painted it and glued it onto the mask. And the hair, is it's real hair, it's my hair from my childhood which is also like what makes it so personal. I, I named it, it's personal because it's kind of all the memories that it holds and, and well, the relationship of me with my hair and how I used it to express myself. And I still do <laughs> to, to some degree and how it kind of affected me uh, as a woman, as a person growing up and all that stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> I understand your video on the bathroom has some audio, so uh, no, no, it doesn't. Oh, okay, good. only the CD, um, but that's like a separate thing. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. so yeah, so just a question now like, you didn't think about this space, it just fit. I think that's very interesting. Like, mm -hmm. maybe not in the first layer, you think that would fit, but maybe you already knew the space. I don't know, how did it? occur to you when you saw the bathroom? So I knew it, I knew how, kind of how it looks, but with me and with my process, everything is always last minute. It's always pushed to the very, very, very last thing. So when I heard that, oh, now we have to think about installing it in the real space, because it was a question, do I show it digitally only? Because I knew I'm gonna be away, I'm away of the, from the country now. So there was a suggestion, maybe you can make a video of your videos and of your works. But I was like, I have three days. This is too much work. I'm sick of working with computers. I want it in the real space. I want to have a hammer in my hand and just slam some stuff to the wall, you know, like this fabric. So I thought, OK, I, I'm going to make it in the studio. But then I was sitting down with some of my friends, like um, Kaya and Sophie. And there was this list of people just 
reserving space and and actually I think Kea was the one that suggested maybe you can use the bathroom I was like yes <laughs> okay let's try it and then I tried it and I loved it but it was a very chaotic very very uh, fast process of me trying to pack my stuff and leave the country and also set it all in the studio with all the restrictions that were going on so yeah definitely I think for for artists now it's one of the main challenge like many you're not in the place but just with COVID the epidemic going around where do we show our work who wants <laughs> to display it and does our work need to fit the space like there is a whole conversation going on about so we have to make it digital no so everybody can see it yes I think your installation kind of reflects that challenge that artists are dealing with now. Like, so we, where do I put it? No? In which gallery? In, exactly. thank, thank you, Nadia, thank you for your work. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so does anyone, let me just check the chat, have some questions? These are the list of, um, students I have. So yeah, I have some questions here in the chat. So I will just ask them. So Sophie, we have a question about the sound installed in your space. Mm -hmm. so, uh, like, what is it is? Uh, where do you got it? In general, general about the sound, like if there was any special process to it. Yeah, so I think in my practice, I've always been very interested in sort of being able to convey messages through foreign languages. Um, being like an expat in Prague, I think that's like a very central thing to a lot of people's lives. Um, so I had in the past always used a lot of samples from different languages or different people talking. So these were specifically conversations I was having with friends of mine um, about, they're all describing um, memories that they have and the most mem vivid memory that they have from their past. Um, and we were sort of having conversations with them and I took a lot of snippets from them. So I think it's like a, a Norwegian girl, a Ukrainian, Turkish, there's some Dutch in there, there's some Austrian in there, some German. So it's a big mingle of all these different languages and sort of all trying to convey a story to you. That was sort of very much the intent that it was them telling a story to you so when you sort of walk through the room they're all from a couple different speakers so that you could sort of get closer to some people telling you the story um and so it sort of matches with the things that are displayed Uh, you're on mute, Selena. Thanks. Sorry. Right over here. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, Keya. This is for you, actually, about finding collaborators to work in Prague. Like, mm -hmm. how how difficult it was to reach for to these people with the current situation? Uh, I would say most of the people I've met kind of started through Prague College, honestly. Uh, one of the first people that I started working with was one of my teachers, Christina. Um, and through her, I met some more people in Brno who also enjoyed like working with me. So um, it, it's, it's really just been about meeting people through whatever immediate connections I can make. So school has been a good way to do that, but it does take some, uh, I would say it does take some action. Like you really need to be more active and try and work with people that you meet in school. No. Yeah. She started off with doing social media. And they send you these videos on, on their own. Out, like on and within yeah, I, I asked them. Some of the people are actually from Bombay. Two of the people in the video are from India. Uh -huh. because, uh, yeah. Before coming to Prague, I was also, I was working in a digital marketing company. So I, I already have like some experience of working with people and in like a more sort of corporate-ish way. So those are the people who are also in the video, yeah. Thank you, Kriya. And then one day, um, 
Yeah. I think I think I, I want to add something. Yeah, like I think, I, I think like uh, if there's no COVID, like even in COVID, I think I uh, tribe is is uh, kind of having a free vibe where there's a lot of like young um, art community that is starting up and or or like it is mainly going to those places that uh, that you talk to people and then and it's not like you directly gain connection from there but it's like uh, you you see them enough and they kind of invite you to do something <laughs> and and so it's is uh, being active is not only like uh, in in the school but also like maybe maybe uh, asking your teachers to uh, to invite you to some kind of exhibition and some kind of parties and and those those people are really interesting and yeah I think that's that's one of the really uh, important things to 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 do as an artist in Prague I think yeah definitely anything I would say and maybe I would be maybe kind of curious about strangers first impressions but maybe it would be a little difficult to talk to someone and be like hey what do you think about me <laughs> just for how I'm right now I think it would be kind of also a challenge I don't know I'm just thinking out loud <laughs> for, for yeah no no it's uh, it, it, it was better before COVID now 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 maybe maybe a little a little a little bit like because less people and then so so it seems like more stranger, but if there's more people, it's like everyone is, it's also kind of stranger, so it doesn't really matter if you're a stranger or not. <laughs> Definitely. I will now have a question for Nadia about the content of your videos. I will share again, and I know this is uh, maybe a little bit hard to see with the video we have, so if you can just to go, talk us through what, what we can see on on the videos. What you can see. <laughs> what we can see. Hmm. We have what we can see. Okay, so... Um, there. Yeah, this one was my video CV, which is because... I mean, that was a task to... One of the tasks that we had to do was to create a video CV. Um, but it kind of grew on me like uh, when I first learned about that we have to do this I, I really hated the idea I thought it's pointless and just terrible um, because I hate writing artist statements and CVs and all that stuff but with the video as a medium and with the ability to create an artwork out, out of it in a way um, it really uh, became a, a statement like a, a really strong thing that tied everything that i did together um even though it was as i said a lot of different things that you can also see here and uh, there was like a, a series of photos and all that stuff um this was like a, a very important piece in the end um so i decided to display it even if only on this monitor <laughs> and uh, uh, the projection in the bathroom was um, an, like a bunch of experiments with textures um, and uh, just tied together so it would play with the, with the space a little bit. So it, if it was dark and if you were sitting there with the doors closed, it would look like kind of an illusion of, of the ceiling moving and everything being, you know, kind of overwhelmingly um, above you <laughs> um, that you can look at. And uh, I used a, uh, a lot of different techniques here. Um, I think the video is a couple minutes long and this piece right here was created with um, artificial intelligence. Uh, it was uh, a bunch of um, pictures of human face features, like a smile, I think, an eye, um, a couple of different variations of those. And then it was put through um, an algorithm that looks for a landscape in a, in a, in a picture. But it wasn't a landscape, it was a, a piece of face, right? So it kind of distorted um, the images and, and uh, 
made this uh, lateral walk, I think it's called, where um, it creates a sequence from pictures into a video. So it kind of morphs together and it looks like this now. <laughs> um, if I can ask, why a landscape? Why did you choose the algorithm of landscape and not any other? Um, to kind of um, have something that's a little bit recognizable, but not really. So I didn't want it to um, preserve the the look of an eyeball or like or like the the look of a smile with a mouth and teeth. I wanted it to have a, a, a uncanny kind of you know vague resemblance to something that you know. So to just look fleshy, look like a part of a human or like an organism in a way but not to an extent that you can clearly tell what it is. I find it very interesting with the whole <laughs> story and it fits with the bathroom idea, right? <laughs> yes. yes, I mean it, it is a little bit gross and yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, it's fine. Um, okay, I will go to, to Nicolas now. We have a question for you. Let me just find you on video here so you can see your space and your work. Nice. Um, yeah, nice. It's about the development. Like, what have changed if you working here in in, Bra in Prague College? And like, is there some evolution to your to your work? Uh, yeah, a good, nice uh, questions. Uh, like, before I was uh, painting a lot, uh, and I consider my. Uh, um, and kind of have a challenge of like how abstract my painting would be and I always kind of like almost went abstract but kind of had some figurative elements to keep it bounded um, but, but I, it's uh, it feels like uh, uh, trying all the new media all the technology and so on like really broaden my uh, my my all the tools I, uh, that are available for for my art practice uh, and having a lot of challenges like this uh, which you don't see here uh, but uh, this kind of then again went like full circle so I sort of come back to the painting but uh, it's it's like I paint with freely with the materials. I'm not bound to 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 paint and brushes. Uh, I you see like there's carbon and uh, fabrics, and in some ways it's still sort of like a painting to me when I work. Uh, but uh, it's freely working with with all the materials that are available to me. Um, yeah, and, and also like the biggest change, I guess, is uh, instead of uh, painting and having the experiment, experimental factor of painting as a research, also like dive into research, like read up on what what the uh, uh, artists and and teachers they give you advice look on this look on that and then it's like a rabbit hole they can just go deep and deep in and write, re read up on so much stuff which uh, it's uh, uh, i guess the biggest change to to my art practice thank you i'm just going to check if we have another question on, on facebook Someone from Thailand is watching. Hey there. <laughs> well, when they comment on the Facebook. Yeah, so if you have any other questions, don't be shy, pop them. I'm checking for them here in the chat. I think it was an awesome display of how different it is now and how maybe you guys started in a, in a different uh, scenario. And you have to adapt to the studio work and adapt to what's happening and changing your your research practice, which are, are for me personally is kind of the most challenging part. Like maybe I can just 
come and get all these tools and try to do something, but then the research has to follow behind. During this time, it was like a little disconnected on display because we had like all these other things to process through. So yeah, I think <laughs> kind of thing there. Don't have any questions I'm receiving. So I know John, if you want to tell us something after hearing your students, like if there is any that you anything that you will add to their work or something that maybe you notice more. Because sometimes us as students, we don't see uh, this process and our teachers kind of have clear a timeline. Well, I mean, the only thing I would say, which I think was quite uh, obvious from, from what everyone said and all the work they showed was one, um, how much people are working together and how much like, it's like so much of have, what having a, a studio practice is about is about conversations between between different people about their work, whether that's um, through like the organized critiques and, and tutorials that we do, or whether that's just people talking to each other in the studio. Um, and that's like a really important part of what makes what makes the course work and, and like how you how you learn to how you learn to be an artist, I guess. And then the other thing I thought was uh, also just to say thinking about how like flexible the studio is. So different people, um, sometimes you're making very small work, sometimes you're making very big work and, and the space we have um, that you can see there is, is, is a really is a really big, but really flexible space. So, so sometimes you can take over a whole part of the, <laughs> a, a, whole, a, whole, a whole corner of the studio to do an installation like Sophie has at the moment or, or like Nicholas has done. And sometimes it's more about like bringing things together, collecting things and, and you don't need so much space, but when, when you do need it, it's there and it's, it's there for you to be able to use, yeah. So, and I think like everyone um, this, this year has, has done a really good job of kind of making the best use of the, of the space available while they can. Thanks, Jan. And guys, how does it affect your work to be seeing like your classmates or maybe other, other artists? Like I know now it's mainly on digital and maybe you're not there, but for me it kind of affects to see fellow artists working and how, how have you seen it in, have you seen it reflected in your work, in the work that you show that you, maybe, I don't know, Nicolas, if you kind of changed from painting, was it the contact with your other classmates or was it something else? Uh, I think uh, it's like the reason why I chose this school. I like just to kind of become or stay contemporary uh, to, to have the arsenal of uh, new media uh, and uh, but the space, it's it's uh, it's a, it's a shared space, uh, but you have like your 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 place where you can be private and and, and work with your stuff, but but uh, uh, it, it's it's both a challenge, but uh, like something that gives you a lot that that uh, you have your classmate next to you. Uh, or across in, uh, across the uh, studio, and uh, yeah, I, I mentioned how my I when I think about my work, I think about uh, all the impressions that you get if they're conscious or not, um, and it's a it's a great great uh, studio space where people work hard uh, on, on their on their things. Yes, definitely. I've been there um, like once, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so, but I had like, because the first first week of the semester, last semester was a uh, hybrid. So I could be there and, and it was like, uh, yeah, great space. I think everyone, every creative, yeah, either designer or artist needs this type of this type of space and also this type of, of webinars of open studio exhibitions so that we can receive comments and I think it helps to talk about your work to people that have never seen it before besides your classmates so I think it was a uh, uh, great to have you here we have some comments on on the Facebook saying great job cool great job Anthony I think your your work it's it's getting out there and I can I can maybe close just encouraging you to keep sharing it we can keep creating uh, these spaces in social media for just broadcasting your work. And I just wish you the best of luck for the next semester and what you're going to have 
presenting as your last one. I think it might be very exciting <laughs> what we're going to see at the end of the summer. Hopefully we can be in person this time, next time. Yeah. And if there is none, any question, any other question guys or any other comments that you want to say. Mm -hmm. I will play one last time the whole video. for you guys and yeah maybe just checking yeah. just very very positive comments guys around your work you can also maybe pop your social media on the chat for people or on the facebook um comments so they can see it there but yeah i think it was with the current situation very great to, to see you know because we are kind of disconnected now and that you prepare these videos and all your work it kind of gives us an idea of what you're working on and, and what can be done studying in Prague College So thank you, thank you for showing this to us. Thank you for, put, for putting some art out there in the world. I think the world needs it highly. And if everyone watching uh, is interested on anything more, just follow us on social media. We will find the full additions, uh, admissions, sorry, at Prague College. And also follow all these students there and find the whole Prague College community. Um, I think we will close now, guys. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. It was really nice. Good yeah. luck for everyone. Yeah. Good luck. Bye.